Hello everybody. It's been a minute since I was live and I just got like the random poll to do it today. Um, I received my DNA activation report from Malia and I'm going to tag her in the comments and I'll tag her in the post. I was having a hard time tagging her before but here is me essentially reading through it like responding to it in real time. Hey guys, thanks for jumping on. Um, and I'm gonna like see what comes up. I think there's a lot that I scanned through and it felt like important to talk about. And I was like, you know what, let's, let's do it. So just to clarify from my perspective of what's happening with DNA activation is that there is an entire specific process that DNA activation practitioners go through. Hey Keely. Um, and they, they, it's, it's a whole thing. Okay. It's a whole thing. I believe originally she was uh, certified through the Wu collective whom I love. Um, Hey Beth joy. And I am just really excited to, to kind of see what the results look like in my life in general, though, they tend to bring a lot of clarity around some of the patterns in your life, some of the big, you know, ideas in your life. And then also it leads you into a period of shadow work in order to kind of reconcile all this information and integrate all this information. So um, I have my report. And so she gives me this whole thing at the beginning, which I've read. Um, and she talks about like, this is going to take some time to fully integrate. Um, yeah, the radical guide is what I have, Beth Joy, uh, from Malia. And what I'm really excited about, though, is some of the things that she talked about. So she said that when she walked into like my energy, I'm assuming, um, she could hear that someone was like yelling, trying to keep me down. But when she when the energy opened up during the tag removal process, and if I'm understanding correctly, tag removal are just, you know, kind of removing like things from my energetic field that have been there from before. And so that was interesting to me because the way that she actually went through this, it says that she kind of worked with Quan Yin, and I don't want to mess these, you know, these pronunciations up, but um, she talked about unconditional love and compassion for me and wanting me to kind of take that energy in, receive it, but also put it back out. So that was really interesting to me because I'm working a lot on my heart space right now. I'm working a lot on obviously healing. I'm going to be kind of cryptic, you guys, because I am going through a divorce. I can't put it all everywhere, but I am going to say that things have been rough, you know, we're rough and are in the process of healing and becoming, you know, just healthier. And so receiving that supernatural support of compassion and love is so on point right now. Like I really, I really appreciate how the universe showed up for me in that one because I could definitely use some help. Um, she also said that the channeled message that she sent to me was, while you're used to being the boss and running your business and family in a routine that you know works, you're in a different situation now, a thousand percent on point. Your boss energy can at times give your ego fuel to run wild, allowing you to feel like you can easily pass judgment on other people or, or order people around. Um, this feeling may come and go quickly, but at this point in your life, it's time to stomp it out. You'll be best served at this time if you collaborate. It's not losing if you don't have the best idea. You're not in a place where, whether it's, or where it's win or lose, survive or lose. Collaboration is way beyond that. Um, coming to a place of peaceful collabor collaboration and unity will benefit you. And mastering this, you will once again rule on a throne that feels, that feels familiar, but also different as you have more people at your side on your team clinking their glasses with you. So this is so on point. Okay. Um, I, I, this is when I decided that I wanted to go live, like this channeled message. I was like, wait, <laughs> I got to process this verbally and my kids are going to be like, what? you know, so this is me doing that. I am totally used to running my life a very specific way. Um, again, I'm going to be a little bit cryptic, but I have not really had a lot of support. Um, really ever but more so in the last couple of years as I've grown my business as I've raised my children as I've just grown as a person it's kind of been uphill against the grain and really me having to like effort through a lot of things and actually later today I plan on sharing a post from a couple of years ago um, 
where I'm posting for my business, but I'm gonna kind of talk about what was going on underneath the surface there, just so you guys get a better idea of what I did grow my business in, like the environment that I was in. And I hope to share this because a lot of times people feel like you have to have everything just, you know, a specific way, you know, have the best tools, the best things, you know, in order to like launch your business. I launched my business and I thrived like in chaos like bad it was really a rough time and the 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 times in my life where i was operating in that chaos i got used to it now i'm in a space where it's transcending that right and i have been transcending that more and more easily as time goes through or you know time goes on but what she what she laid out here with this collaboration versus like running the show energy i think that this is kind of organically already happening in my life i'm I'm way more open to people's feedback. I'm way more open to hearing other ideas. I'm way more open to um, being wrong. I mean, just being wrong. And for a long time, it was I couldn't be wrong. I, I was running everything. So if I'm wrong about this, then kind of the whole house of cards falls down. But now I'm in a space where it's actually a little safe to be wrong and to explore like changing my mind on certain ideas and arriving at new ideas that are more in alignment with where I'm trying to go, right? And so that's been a huge theme in my life lately. It feels like the energy of collaboration, it feels like abundance to me. It feels like there's room for other people's voices. There's room for uncertainty a little bit because for me, collaboration does bring up feelings of uncertainty. It brings up feelings of like, what if you don't hold up your end of the bargain? What if you duck out, you know, and that's just from my own wounding from the past. And so stepping into collaboration right now takes a lot of trust and a lot of courage for me. So again, to be um, receiving a message like this is very meaningful to me. Um, it feels like I'm being supported. That's what it feels like. And that's the kind of the, what echoes through the entire report is the things that I'm going through and the things that I've been having to, I, I felt like I had to do all on my own are suddenly you know, the, the weight is being distributed a little bit better. The pressure is being distributed a little bit better. I have people who I can talk to about what I'm going through. Um, and a couple of years ago, that wasn't the case. I didn't really feel like I could trust anybody with what was going on because I had to maintain a certain level of control over my situation or I'd lose it. You know what I mean? Like it was just how I was coping and how I was surviving at the time. But now as I'm stepping into a new chapter in my life, obviously um no longer need that you know that kind of tight rain so that was really cool um she also activated some gene keys and i'm super curious to learn more about these so i'm going to be asking her more but um she said that the the keys were 63 um the gift was inquiry and the shadow was doubt the other one was 64, the gift is imagination, the shadow is confusion. Um, five, which is uh, my radiance, I guess. That gift is patience and the shadow is impatience. So it sounds kind of like, here's what it's like when it's on and here's what it's like when it, the shadow is running, right? Like here's how it feels. And then purpose was adventure versus hunger. Gift was adventure and shadow versus hunger. And this was fascinating to me because for a long time, my drive forward, my whole life really, my drive forward is survival. And survival is really another word for hunger for me. Like growing up, there was food scarcity. There were many times where I had to scavenge for food through my neighborhood. Um, there were many, many times where I didn't know if I was gonna eat. And survival kind of brought me to this point of like, I'm resourceful, right? This resourcefulness. Um, that was fueled by hunger but the gift side of this or it feels like the activated side of my purpose is more adventurous which really feels lighter obviously than hunger but adventure is similar to hunger to me because you're looking to experience right like it's kind of like a hunger for new experiences and new feelings and new emotions and new things that you're moving through and that feels way better than like a low-level survival hunger right um this one was really interesting to have it tied with my purpose right because it feels like 
my purpose and, and adventure. Hey, Max. Uh, my purpose and adventure is like what I wanted, what I wanted to feel. That's what I, that's what I've wanted all of this to feel like for so long. And it's starting to really, really, in the last couple of months, really feel like an adventure, creating my business, tapping more into myself. And for those of you who know me, like know me, know me, I've talked about this feeling of um, identity crisis, like so many times where I say, I feel like I want to be known for this, want to be known for that. And there's this like heavy energy of like legacy, right? I, I make decisions through that lens. But now looking at this idea of adventure in my purpose, that feels way lighter and I can experiment, right? And that's kind of the conclusion that I came to the other day before I decided to launch you the visionary while actually talking to Maximilian. It's an experiment, right? I get to play, I get to create, I get to try things out and that feels a lot lighter and a, more, a lot more abundant for me and my purpose than hunger, right? Which is normally where my energy is at, it's hanging out in that like level. So that was really fascinating to me. Um, there was this process of seal removal, which I don't totally understand. Um, it sounds like the seals are a supernatural energy that has been like, they're placed on earth on like all of humankind about 200,000 years ago to kind of keep us where we're at, like to not transplant, not ascend forward or move forward in our lives. And so she did some, I'm guessing removal of particular areas where she noticed seals in me. And for me, the one that came up was the death seal, which is defined here as everybody has one. Death seal is placed on the DNA. So we as humans live shorter lives and is also kept us uh, reincarnating repeatedly. The seal is a genetic seal and has been handed down through hereditary lines. This is like interesting to me because I haven't really ever, I haven't, I vibe with the concept of reincarnation. Like it makes sense that our energy doesn't just like dissipate into nothing. But I also feel like I've already done that. Like I feel like I've reincarnated like 20 bajillion times. I'm like, okay, so like, do I really need to do this like again, again, or am I good to like <laughs> hang out in the ethers for a while, you know? And, um, that's what this made me think of this idea of like being able to just relax in my energy and not feel at mission all the time, because I do feel like I'm here on a mission that a thousand percent resonates with my energy. I talk about it in my content all the time, but it'd be cool to just like vibe like in space. You know what I mean? As stardust, like that sounds like such a vibe and I'd like to do that. Um, so she did also some repair on my DNA strands and then I'm guessing after then evolves some of them. That's what I'm understanding. And guys, this is like, I'm not a practitioner at all. <laughs> like I'm just kind of moving through um, the, the report live here, but she gave me a mantra through that that says as I release my purpose becomes clear and that was like soul affirming right kind of what I was just talking about I'm used to creating this really uh, stressful energy like hunger like oh my gosh am I going to survive and the the release of that energy feels like it clarifies my mind so that I can make better decisions more informed decisions like just more grounded decisions as opposed to being reactionary to the things that are happening in my life, right? Which is a concept that I've talked about for like a really long time, you know, being conscious with your choice. But I feel like I have um, really started to embody that in the last couple of months and it's, and it's showing, it's showing. I mean, look, I mean, guys, like, I mean, I, I can obviously recognize that I look better than the last time you saw me, right? So there is such a cool connection being made from these things that I've been thinking about and talking about and kind of swirling around in my energy and now it's dropping in like super fast over the last couple of weeks and months and here we are you know I'm, I'm actually getting to see physical transformation as a result of this you know this kind of transition so that's really cool she went through my chakras this was fun this is actually um I didn't read all of these right now but I'm I, I stopped before I got to throw because I knew that she was gonna have something to say there. And I've been feeling it 
for a little while. Throat chakra stuff is so interesting to me because I'm obsessed with expression, right? I literally do marketing, content creation, like I can talk. You guys, I haven't like stopped to breathe this whole time. So whenever I, you know, think about the, sh the throat chakra, I always wonder like what the reader is going to say at this point. So I'm gonna start, but I'll pay close attention to the throat and the root. She said she saw deep roots anchoring me down into my own universe, which is fascinating because I have struggled with the concept of grounding because I sometimes feels like I'm grounding into the reality as it is. And I'm like, I don't want to ground into that reality. I want to ground into the reality I'm creating. Um, so this was cool that she's used the words into your own universe because then I get to kind of ground into my own desired way of existing in that moment rather than having to ground the same way as everybody else. So that was cool. And then um, it says, bringing you to an understanding that where you belong, hang on, I just say, where you belong um, is everywhere that you are. You don't have to go anywhere. Everywhere you go is where you're meant to be. You have to understand this for yourself. No one can prove to you that you're meant to be here. You are here. There's nothing to prove. Totally resonate with that. I feel like sometimes one of the, the things that I struggle with is feeling productive and feeling like I'm helping enough in the world and feeling like I'm doing enough for you know my people that I care about like in terms of healers and you know all of you guys that I love to support I struggle sometimes with like am I putting enough out there am I doing enough um because that's how I make sense of my worth here as a person like the space that I occupy but I've been healing that a lot lately where like my presence itself is dope and I don't have to do things in order to be worthy of hanging out with you guys and so that has been healing in the last couple of months too and the sacral um, you're ready to step into an energy that's not passive you're going to step into an energy that allows you to accept I saw you surrounded with flower petals in a grassy field creating at your leisure it was beyond any definition of feminine energy it's not masculine nor feminine it's whole integrating being acceptance creativity and pushing into the, pushing ideas into the world but you don't have to push because you just are and it just is there is no split in you it's integrating and it's integrated it's the mother it's the self it's beyond any binary definition so this one <laughs> the vibe of being out alone in a field like just making art and like tending to my plants and like living a very very slow paced conscious life i want that like i i really really like that that's you know again i can't say too much about where i'm at right now you know with things but i've been doing a lot of yard work i've been doing a lot of like being outside in the dirt and connecting with earth energy in that way and i think it's helped me turn it like away from passive energy and more into an active uh, agent in my own life. So I've been um, becoming more responsive to things that are bothering me. Like if something's bothering me, I go and take care of it rather than just like sitting with it or sitting on it for like ever and complaining about it. Now I feel capable to just go and respond to the issue at hand. Um, even if it's just like a minor thing that's slightly inconveniencing me. I don't know if that makes sense. In the past, in order for me to make a change um, that pertained to me and me alone, I would have to like be suffering, like super suffering before I would actually make a change. You know, this is why, you know, things have taken me so long. I've been wanting to make a change in my relationship, like leave for years, but it hasn't, you know, it took me a while. It took me until it was miserable before I was like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> um, so I'm excited about this change because I don't really want to hang out in that energy longer than I have to anyway. I can make a change much faster and I feel empowered to and emboldened to now. So that's that. The solar plexus, um, there's a fire energy here, which I was expecting. I've worked on my solar plexus more than anything else ever. Um, you're going to step into solar plexus energy feeling like it's more than a fire within you. It's earth separating. The blocks within your solar plexus are separating like the Grand Canyon. The energy is breaking through to light your entire body up. So solar plexus is like creative energy output. Like for me, it is where I, that's the energy that I tend to because I feel like I've always felt like I was supposed to pay special attention 
to that one. Since I ever learned about the chakras, since I ever heard about these concepts, tending to my ability to be creative has always felt like a very important thing. As a child even, like not making rules about how things need to look when I'm making art or allowing myself like poetic license when I'm writing, all of these different things like have been always important to me so it was cool to see this reflected back um the heart chakra she says she could hear it rumbling like before an earthquake says you're getting ready to emit and radiate so much from your heart chakra you're knocking down walls constantly right now while bringing these walls down and showing this energy and expressing it may exhaust you but it's because you're flexing a new muscle um this is so spot on like i really can't even say it better i have been learning to love myself I've been learning to love like in a, in a healthier way, like show love and show affection in healthier ways, communicating it in a more, um, I don't want to keep saying healthy, but not like not demanding, a, not demanding a particular response or not needing it to look a certain way, just having it be more organic and more um, just an expression, right? So before when I would express love I would express it freely but then I would kind of like wait to see how people are going to react or, or see how people are going to to um, take what I said now I don't really care as much because the place that I'm expressing love from doesn't need you to respond a certain way I don't need you to say it back I don't need you to do any of that stuff I'm just going to show up and sh show up how I show up right and, and love like I love so that's cool. I feel like that's changing. That's that's a part of me that's changing a lot lately is my heart because of everything going on. The throat. This is the one I told you guys to watch out for. Um, it says there's some second guessing happening in this chakra. Even though you're seen as someone who says all the things, there's a big weight here. You're holding back important messages. People may not be ready for them, but that's not your problem. I did some deep clearing in the chakra. So not surprised. Not surprised at all, you guys. Um, there's so much I want to say. I don't know if you guys can even feel it. I wish there was uh, a way that I could talk about this stuff more openly, but it's just due to the sensitivity of the situation of going through a separation and divorce. Like, there's not really, like, I have to be really careful. But, you guys, when I can tell my story and when I can tell it, like, freely, it's going to be a game changer. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be amazing because the things that I've gone through in the last three months or so, my life is like radically different. My life is radically different. I feel radically different. And so I do feel like I have to hold back some things because of the, you know, the legalities of the situation. But I am working on figuring out how to draw out things that I want to share without sharing too much. That's like, what I'm working within, you know, like in a, in a technical sense, trying to figure out, okay, how can I tell the story without giving away any important details of my own life? I'm actually excellent at doing this with other people's stories, but of course with your own, it's like, oh, you know, it's all very intense. So I'm working on figuring this out because there is a lot that I haven't been able to share. I want to share. And you guys would be better for, for hearing it. I honestly feel like I have a lot of lessons and things that I've learned that would be beneficial across all areas of life, you know, obviously including business, but also your own personal relationship with yourself, you know, relationships with other people. There's a lot of that kind of stuff that I want to share. And in due time, in due time. Okay. <coughs> all right, I'm going to do third eye crown and then I'm going to just like wrap it up here because there's like more 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 pages more sacred soul alignments and my archetypes okay i'll tell my, i'll tell you guys my archetypes okay so then the third eye is deeply connected to your heart um now more than ever you see the true desires of your heart and soul you may have been shut off to this a bit before some visions that were out of reach are very available to you now absolutely yes um wow yeah so some of the and what this is talking about i think is just my own ability to connect with my life like um I wanted to have this really like vibrant life where I'm doing things with my kids. That's why I homeschool them. You know, we're teaching them from life. 
I'm, I'm adventuring, I'm having fun, I'm doing all these things, but it all just felt so far away because I was stuck in survival forever, right? And not that I'm completely out of the woods because the situation is, you know, uh, developing, but this headspace that I'm in, I, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I see how I can at cause, you know, make the situation a little bit easier for myself, make it better for everybody involved by, by like tapping into my intuition and, and doing the work from there. So totally on point with this. And then the crown one says you're downloading energy codes rapidly information that is for other people. I saw a flood of what looked like the matrix code flowing down. It's very open. Yes. Yes. I'm constantly channeling you guys. It's like a whole thing. I have to intentionally like stop, you know, um, otherwise I'll just keep going all day. And then my, my primary clairs that were activated during the, the DNA activation is clairvoyance, the art of clear seeing that what is not present in front of you. And then clear audience, which is clear hearing, um, with either your ear or your, your mind's inner ear. Like you hear it within your, you know, you guys know what I'm saying, right? So those are activated. I already have clear cognizance pretty, pretty much on lock. So I'm excited to see how these new, uh, clairs come into play. I'll continue to develop them over time. And then the activated archetypes um, that she she talked about here were the seer and the natural witch slash medicine woman. So the seer is all about like high intuition. It's kind of like the high priestess. Uh, it says she's a bridge between the seen and unseen world. Highly sensitive psychic visionary uh, with an intensity <laughs> Yeah, this is pretty much me. Uh, she journeys deep and to often dark places and is not afraid or has learned to not be afraid to face the shadows. Yeah, I'm at this point in my life where like literally nothing you could say to me would be shocking or like cause me to judge you. Like I just, you, I can't. Like I've seen so much. I've been through so much. I've held space for so many different things over my time. I mean, I've been coaching in some capacity for almost like 10 years. So I've worked with hundreds of people one-on-one -on -one at this point. Um, and I, I'm not going to be surprised by your specific situation, which is gives me, I feel, a unique edge to speak to the heart of the issue because I know what's happening. Like when you come up to me and you tell me, hey, my marketing is jacked, I'm like, mm, this is actually has a lot more to do with your fear of you know, being seen or... Um, what it means in other areas of your life if you actually do succeed here. You know, things like that, I can just cut right to it and I don't have to pretend that we have a marketing problem because 99% of the time, we don't. We have a problem that shows itself and becomes obvious in the marketing, but is it a marketing problem? No, um, most of the time not. Like marketing problems would be like, hey, this page isn't converting, I need to like move this module around over here and then it'll convert better. That's a real marketing problem. The other problems are like clarity problems, decision making problems, uh, not believing in yourself problems, stuff like that. And that's where I really just, I see it. I see it when it comes up and it's dope. So that's that one. And the secondary one was um, the natural witch slash medicine woman. She has the capacity to journey into the shadows in order to find the light, similar to the seer. Um, Throughout history, she's been misunderstood and at times mistreated, and so many feel fear or defensiveness around being accepted by the world. I can re I can relate to that. I've always felt like my level of sensitivity to reality made people uncomfortable. Like even very, very young, when I was trying to just understand the world that I was in, the questions that I was asking always seemed to be inconvenient to the people that I was asking them to. It seemed to be... Um, one of those things where like I don't even want to think about that so don't ask me that you know and then when I got into church it just continued obviously to happen there I'm like well why is this this way and that doesn't really make sense if you look at it this other way you know so I was always kind of picking things apart and feeling into them feeling through them in a way that wasn't always received well and so it, it did create some wounding around being misunderstood but I have definitely like done a lot of work with that and don't really care as much anymore <laughs> um, the other thing that was interesting about this one is that the sacred lover which is um, 
connected to this uh, lives in the sexual chakras. So that was interesting. I was like, okay, um, we'll see about that. And then she did an element evaluation talking about fire. Now is the time for action. When you feel fire in your belly and your spirit, it must be used. This has been actually true for me. There's been a lot of times where um, I would, I used to just sit in my anxiety. When I was feeling anxiety, I would just like hang out there. Like, okay, I'm anxious. Okay, and I'm still anxious and I'm just sitting here. Now I have the pattern built up to turn that energy into some sort of action. So that's why I've been doing the yard work. That's why I've been doing, you know, things outside and like, you know, just moving my body more um, because now I, can, I have figured out how to transmute that energy and that's through action. So that's really cool. Um, and then she did some soul alignments and these are kind of longer, but that was, that was my DNA activation report. Honestly, you guys, I am so elated. I can't wait to con like learn more about some of these things, especially those gene keys. That seemed really, really fascinating to me. Um, especially as I learn how I interact with all of them, because the first one was life's work and then evolution and then radiance and then purpose. So I'm going to find out from her. I'll give her some, you know, I'll ask her what these things mean a little bit more. And then maybe I'll share with you guys again, but thank you for everybody that hung out with me. I really appreciate your energy and time here. Just want to let you guys know, I do have a offer open right now. It's called you, the visionary. It's a 21 day live activation of the visionary within you. We're going to be transcending all of the excuses, all of the limitations, all of the different things that come up in response to you stepping into your visionary identity. And the reason this is essentially, it's visionary, like, like shadow work. You know what I mean? So I'm going to speak to you as if, you know, you're already in that space. You're already, you know, creating the business of your dreams. You're already doing the things that you want to do. And then I'm going to sit and wait for your response to that to tell me, but wait, that's not true for me because, or, well, I'm an exception because, or whatever. And we're going to deal with it right then and there. It's going to be a group chat for, you know, for the, the discussion parts, but there are going to be videos, voice notes, uh, journal prompts, activities. It's like very dynamic. I've never put out a program like this before ever. And I'm only charging $47 for it. Um, I had someone in my inbox saying that they were concerned because that's very low. And am I, am I operating from scarcity consciousness or whatever? Let me just clear that up right now. I priced it very low because I'm not operating from scarcity consciousness and I don't believe that I have to price high ticket in order to make a lot of money. So mm, there's that. Don't worry about me. I'm good. Um, but yeah, it's $47, 21 days. It's going to be happening through an app called Telegram. I'm actually going to have the entire group chat in there. It's a private chat just for the people that join. And um, it's going to be dope. Like it's going to be dope. It's $47. Like I said, the link is in my caption above. If you vibe with me and you just want to kind of put your toe in and see what it's like to work with the noon in it, this is definitely a thing that you want to check out. Even if you worked with me before, um, you haven't worked with me now. <laughs> it's a different vibe if you couldn't pick it up. So that's that. The only thing is that Telegram is an app um, and I believe it requires a phone number. So that is, you know, that's what's different about this time. I just can't make another Facebook group, you guys. It just, they end up like buried and I don't want to do that. So I'm not gonna. Um, I love you all. Let me know if you guys want me to be going live again. I stopped for a bit just through the transitions. Um, I've had a lot going on, like a lot, like a lot, a lot. So, you know, I've been a little bit more quiet, but I still love you guys. I still really appreciate everyone that is connected with me and reads my content, especially you guys, like when you like and engage with my content, it really does like help me. You know what I mean? Obviously from the algorithm standpoint, but also just helps me feel seen, helps me feel heard, um, helps me feel like I'm making sense because sometimes these ideas come and I'm like, is this one gonna be too out there? You know, is this one gonna be out of reach for people? And when you guys engage back with me, I'm like, oh, yes, my people, I have them around, thank goodness. So um, I appreciate that. And then you guys always know you can share, you know, those posts out and stuff, which a lot of you do. So I appreciate that as well. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys go. Love you, bye.